So my project is on Mount Hood, which is a volcano outside of Portland, Oregon. This summer I visited Portland, and as you can see from the photograph, I was struck by its deep glacial ravines and how it rises dramatically out of the forests that surround Portland. However, I also wondered, like its sister volcano, Mount St. Helens, if there was a potential for a volcanic explosion, which could devastate the city. I didn't get that answer when I was there, so I figured I should do a video about Mount Hood's volcanic history and what sort of threat the modern volcano poses. Some general history about the region. Uh, Mount Hood is about halfway down the Cascade uh, Belt of Volcanoes in the Pacific Northwest, which stretches from Mount Garibaldi in southern British Columbia to Lassen National Park in Northern California. As we learned in class, the Cascade Belt is caused by the subduction of the Juan de Fuca Plate underneath the North American Plate. The Cascades are actually composed of two mountain ranges, the relatively small and older Western Cascades and the High Cascades, which consist of the mountains we usually associate with the Cascades, like Crater Lake, Mount Rainier, and Mount St. Helens, and of course, Mount Hood. The range started forming about 3.5 million years ago, and like many volcanoes produced above subduction zones. The Cascades are composite volcanoes produced out of basalt and basaltic andesite, which in turn created the mountain's steep peaks. The volcanic history of Mount Hood uh, has been very intermittent, with short, violent periods followed by as much as 10,000 years of peacefulness. The last major eruption occurred sometime in the 1790s, before any European settlement. So any information about this eruption comes from examining formations caused by that eruption. There was some small volcanic activity in the 1840s, when pioneers first began settling the area around the volcano. But since European settlement, the area has been in, uh, in one of its quiet periods. However, Mount Hood continues to pose some threat to Northern Oregon. Mount Hood is for obvious reasons compared to Mount St. Helens, which is less than 100 miles away. Fortunately, most geologists seem to agree that, uh, that the major event like the one that occurred at Mount St. Helens is highly unlikely to happen at Mount Hood in the coming years. Uh, to give you some perspective about what a major event entails, these pictures show the amount of destruction caused by the Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980. The last two are before and after photos from the same point, exhibiting the enormous amount of debris that exited the volcano. Geologists think that a major event is unlikely at Mount Hood because the seismic activity in the interior has been fairly light and that these earthquakes have been deep, showing that most activity is confined to magma chambers further down in the mountain. For these reasons, geologists think that the likelihood of a major event like the one at Mount St. Helens um, occurring at Mount Hood um, in the next 30 years is about 1 in 10,000. Also, seismic data um, is not a perfect indicator of earthquakes, but it was influential in forecasting the Mount St. Helens explosion, and the, the science of predicting volcanoes has improved tremendously since then. Because of this, geologists think that if a major event was to happen, they would be able to identify the increase in cluster earthquakes within the mountain and have at least a couple of days to evacuate the area before the eruption, obviously diminishing the effect of a volcanic eruption. The other factor mitigating the destructive potential of Mount Hood in a major volcanic event is its distance from Portland, which uh, most of the population of Northern Oregon lives. Even though the mountain appears to lord over the city, it is actually more than 50 miles away from Portland. The prominence of the peak and the steep angle belie the mountain's actual distance. Furthermore, experts doubt that the deadly pyroclastic flows from a large volcanic explosion could travel much more than a 15-mile radius around the mountain. Instead, volcanic activity on Mount Hood in the coming years will likely be small and more disruptive rather than actually destructive. Large eruptions are often the result of the collapse of a large lava dome, as happened at Mount St. Helens. However, Mount Hood at the moment only has a very small lava dome. The little nub in this picture is a small but still forming lava dome on top of, the, of top of Mount Hood. If this did collapse, an eruption would occur because the pressure from within the mountain would be released. 
uh, but there is not enough material within the mountain for it to be all that destructive. This eruption would produce lava flows, which could be dangerous on other volcanoes, but they would essentially be harmless to the area surrounding Mount Hood, because the lava flows would not be able to travel fast or far enough to seriously affect human settlement. The collapse of the dome would also produce an ash cloud, but unlike Mount St. Helens' very heavy ash cloud, Mount Hood's smack produces very thin ash that would coat buildings in the surrounding area, disrupt machinery and transistors, but would not be heavy enough to collapse buildings or affect evacuations. This picture is of, an ash, is of ash deposited from Mount St. Helens. Similarly, Mount Hood's past eruptions have not produced much pumice, so geologists seem to think that it is unlikely that this would happen as well. Instead, Mount Hood's greatest potential for disaster during a small eruption would be from its pyroclastic flows. The sources seem to indicate that the pyroclastic flows by themselves would not be all that dangerous. The risk comes from the melting of the massive glaciers on Mount Hood, which pr would produce um, lahars. The already dangerous lahars would be particularly deadly on Mount Hood because of its steep sides and jagged glacial ravines that would allow the lahars to quickly be funneled down the side of the volcano. This is a picture of a lahar in Nicaragua. Um, in fact, conditions on the mountain are so prone to mass wasting that some sources are more worried about landslides that don't involve um, volcanic activity. Depending on the size of the lahars, they would potentially destroy many of the small settlements that surround the mountains and inundate the forests around the volcano. Besides the destruction of the area around Mount Hood, the lahars and landslides are also a problem because many of the ravines re lead directly into the Columbia River. The buildup of settlement could disrupt industry, hydroelectric power, and shipping along the economically important waterway. In sum, despite Mount Hood's imposing beauty, in similarity to other more violent Cascade volcanoes, it still poses very little risk of actual harm to Portland, and even the areas directly surrounding the volcano. This is a result of the unlikely chance of a major event, a small eruption's inability to produce enough debris, and Mount Hood's distance from Portland. At the moment, Mount Hood will continue to be a safe recreation point, an important symbol of Northern Oregon. Thanks for watching.